My name is Keith Martin, I'm a professor in the Information Security Group at Royal Holloway University of London and I'm going to discuss the fascinating conflict between the scientific benefits of deploying cryptography and the politics of using it in everyday technology. This issue was recently in the news with regard to the use of encryption in BlackBerry handheld devices which are produced by the Canadian technology company Research in Motion RIM. BlackBerry were facing potential restrictions on the use of their devices in certain countries including India and the United Arab Emirates. But how could such a beneficial and important technology such as cryptography be the source of such fuss and intrigue? Cryptography provides a suite of basic mechanisms for implementing the security services that protect electronic data and one such mechanism is encryption which transfers unprotected data, or plain text, into scrambled data known as ciphertext, and only the holder of the correct key can recover the plain text from the encrypted ciphertext. This allows sensitive data to be transferred safely across unprotected networks, such as wireless channels. Many technologies that we use every day have cryptography at their core, and we use cryptography every time we use a payment card, a mobile phone, or a Wi-Fi network. And that's why Royal Holloway's MSc in Information Security dedicates one of its core modules to understanding the role of cryptography in protecting electronic data. The most obvious perspective involves good guys using cryptography to protect their data from attack by bad guys. However, this is certainly not necessarily the perspective of governments, who have traditionally viewed cryptography as a technology for protecting national security. While most governments recognise that use of cryptography is generally beneficial, they are also painfully aware that cryptography can be used to protect the communications of bad guys who are doing bad things, and the potential use of cryptography by those who are perceived as criminals or enemies of the state thus presents governments and society in general with some political and moral dilemmas. The traditional approach to exercising control over the exploitation of cryptography has been through export controls. And while these remain in certain jurisdictions, this approach has created many problems and is on the wane. However, this has not meant that governments have given in to their concerns about use of cryptography. Instead, the enforcement approach has shifted towards regulations that permit lawful access to data that has been encrypted. And these essentially involve legal processes for demanding access to either keys or to plain text itself. This comes with numerous complications. Not the least being the fact that an international traveller using a portable technology that deploys encryption may well cross the borders of different countries, each of which may have their own laws regarding the use of cryptography. And to make things worse, in many cases the traveller may be quite unaware that their device is even using cryptography. Which brings us nicely back to RIM and the networks of BlackBerry handhelds, all of which deploy cryptography. Just one of the problems that certain governments were having with RIM was that the email of personal BlackBerry users is encrypted before being stored on a RIM server in Canada. And this is not necessarily great news for a government who wishes to investigate the BlackBerry email of one of its citizens. Several such countries were sufficiently frustrated that they threatened restrictions on BlackBerry users. Of course, there are political and technological solutions, and the most obvious one is to provide local RIM email servers that can be managed in a manner that complies with local government requirements. Nonetheless, this story also highlights how easily an international traveller using a BlackBerry can quite innocently find themselves on the wrong end of local laws. The events concerning RIM simply represent a recent version of a story that has repeatedly played itself out ever since cryptography started to appear in the mainstream technology. The search for a balance between individual rights to use cryptography and government requirements to access data in certain circumstances. The RIM story is both a new story and an old story. And it's a story that we'll certainly hear again because it's never going to go away.